Welcome. I'm here with uh, Marco Lukic. Uh, he is a uh, fifth dan uh, in Kendo, of course, and uh, also associate professor at the University of Zadar in Croatia. Uh, and he's also the president of the Croatian Kendo Association. Uh, so welcome, Marco. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's a real privilege, as I mentioned before, after the lineup of guests uh, that you had so far to you know have me now. I'm, I'm really I feel privileged. Well, we like to have a lot of different perspectives and uh, you guys have done amazing work over there in, in, in Croatia. Um, my understanding is it, it, it's, it's, your, your federation seems to have kind of come sort of out of, out of nowhere, right? Relatively uh, young and yeah, yet has sort of emerged as a, as a kendo powerhouse in Europe. I would say powerhouse. Uh, we emerged maybe as, as a novelty for now. <laughs> we'll see how, how things go. <laughs> Uh, well, it's it's yeah. certainly thriving. I mean, how many how many members do you have? Around it, it, well, now with the virus situation, I think the numbers are a little bit low, but I think we range between 120 to 150, depending on on you know, at, at, at our peak uh, a few years ago. Uh, it's a, it's a small community, right? So it's a small country, so therefore it it it, it necessarily is a small community. Uh, but I think we are trying to do something uh, regarding the kendo situation uh, in croatia or just the idea of promoting kendo and doing something with you know uh, i'm not sure uh, how things will go actually after mm -hmm. the pandemic how things will develop you know there's always this problem and issue of getting new members and now these people are kind of afraid of contact they're interacting and, and all of that so to and, and we had like a bunch of kids like a, a group of kids in my dojo in Zadar, uh, a bunch of kids who were training like really hard, they were really promising uh, right before the pandemic and then the pandemic hit and the parents are like, no, they're great, but, you know, <laughs> we are sorry. And it's understandable, but, you know, it's going to be, I think it's going to be kind of hard to pick up the pieces and, and, and try to, so we're going to have to rebuild everything. And, okay. and it's not going to be a creation thing, I think, uh, only a creation problem. I think it's going to be a general problem throughout Europe and probably the world. Definitely, uh, and and Kendo itself might might be forced to change. Um, yeah. I don't know if you saw, but yeah, they, they they have the new tournament rules here in Japan. I did, I did. Right, um, lots of you know wakare mm. uh, calls. Um, some people say made for interesting Kendo to watch. <laughs> it's going to be better, I think, because the, the, I think that the, the the fights or the matches will be more dynamic in the sense that it's going to be uh, Tsubazeria forever. <laughs> You know, that they're going to have to do, actually do something. So that's going to be an improvement. But I don't know. With the mass if those rules, and all if those rules stay around. Yeah. yeah. I, I, well, it depends. I, I read the, was it Alex that wrote the, 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 the like an outline thing or he posted something about it and I went through it. The, the the regulations with the mask and the sort of that and, and the fears, the potential fears of things uh, potentially changing, like per, like permanent changes being set in place. So I don't know. It's going to be an interesting post-pandemic situation, I think, uh, all around. And especially for Croatia, especially for these small countries where you're trying to sort of set everything in place and then you get hit with something like that. And it's, it's a mess. So so when you started the federation, right, you, you started the, the Croatian Kenda Federation, right? Actually, uh, no, there, there, there are a couple of groups at the beginning. With the whole thing, the movement, let's call it the movement, at the time, because it was not something that was organized from from the the, the get go, um, we it started around the early two thousands or so, two thousand two thousand one, depending on the dojo. There were a couple of a couple of uh, clubs, a couple of dojos in Croatia at the time. Uh, my dojo came in a bit late. Uh, I think around we formed officially around two thousand and four, although we started working on it in two thousand one. But what what, what needs to be pointed out it's the, it's the, there was no real there was no network right so uh, at the time you i started the whole thing in zadar uh, simply by being fascinated with kendo or, or finding about kendo through films or at the time it was i think black rain with michael douglas the usual typical go-to reference of the older <laughs> kenshi uh twilight samurai at the time and stuff like that mm -hmm. so either through movies or popular cultures and and uh, and at, 
and the process, at least in Zadar, was that, okay, that's interesting. Let's find a couple of people who want to sort of try something with it or about it. And, and, and then you started contacting people, talking to people uh, and things like that. Um, the same thing was going on in Zagreb in the capital. They had, at the time, I believe there was like two dojos uh, and they were quite active in the sense that they were, uh, because of the geographical location, it was much easier for them to travel around. Uh, so they traveled to Austria, to Hungary, and all the neighboring countries, which is the benefit of being in Europe. You can really move, move rather quickly uh, from country to country and, and get people, you know, visit the different federations and associations and stuff like that. Uh, but in Zadar at the time, it was a bit problematic. I mean, imagine learning Kirigayashi through email. For example, it's <laughs> an interesting aspect. Or not having uh, a Shinai, but actually having to do like for the first couple of months Kirgashu with uh, Bokutos <laughs> as well. Yeah, it's it's one of those things. You, know, you go through these rites of passage. I would call them or traumas. Somebody else would call them, <laughs> call it. Uh, you know, to set everything up. Then around 2004, five, six, as we progressed slowly, there was more networking being uh, set in place. We connected with different people. The, 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 the whole thing expanded a little bit. And we started inviting people uh, to Croatia. Uh, different senses, different connections were being made. Uh, at the time we had, we were uh, greatly, uh, uh, we had some great help from uh, the Hungarian Federation, uh, Barani Sensei, Abe Sensei uh, at the time. Um, also from the Austrian uh, kind of federation, and then on our side, like a, like a, there are two lines of communication. I, I took care of the Italian side uh, with um, Lancini Sensei, Livio Lancini Sensei, uh, the Italian federation. So we organized a couple of seminars. Um, and we had uh, we had some uh, visitors from uh, from Japan as well. Sami Sensei at the time. You know, who sort of who went to Italy and then uh, made a detour and came to Croatia uh, uh, for a weekend for weekend gashku. So that the, the those were the early early let's say steps. And then from that point on, you know, more and more dojos, more and more uh, people becoming interested. And once again, it relates very closely to popular culture. <laughs> and that's the best recruiting. I, mean, I think Kill Bill came out somewhere around those years. Yeah, in, in those yeah, years. Yeah. Kill Bill and, and was it um, The Last Samurai, uh, which was also you know, spiked the numbers of, of, of interested you know, candidates, but then they show up and you actually, you know, <laughs> I should <somebody laughs> little, see you in an hour. <laughs> a little differently than, uh, than, yeah. than, than they think. I mean, that, that's not just limited to, uh, to overseas. Um, recently in Japan, there's been a spike of interest in Kendo, thanks to... Um, uh, uh, the Demon Slayer uh, anime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, Kimetsu no Yaiba. I think it's a transit sort of the Demon Slayer or something like that. Uh, you know, the movie broke all sorts of records, and it's bringing bringing people to the dojos. So I think we, that, that that would be the perfect uh, sort of investment in marketing that the, all of the federations, including the old Japan, should you know, sort of go for, and I like find producers who would like to produce movies or related. Uh, materials uh, about kendo or uh, some sort of sword. It does seem like a bit of a missed mark. opportunity to me. I remember um, there was uh, a couple of years ago there was uh, some you know like uh, some some manga. I forget the name was, but uh, it was you know one of those like uh, aimed at girls, pretty like beautiful boys, but they were all mm -hmm. like the souls of famous swords. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, personified and this actually drove a wave of interest of 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 young women going to like the sword museum here in tokyo and, and other places looking at uh looking at japanese swords right it seems like yeah, it would have been a perfect opportunity works. no no yeah. but it, it works people are attracted because otherwise i mean i don't know i think it's the situation is pretty much the same everywhere some countries i'm talking from the european perspective obviously some countries have uh, more of a cultural presence, uh, sort of a, a more influence, let's say, with the Japanese culture and uh, this, you know, f folklore to a certain extent, and martial arts, and they have longer traditions. France, for example, Italy, like from the 60s, 50s, late 50s, and so forth. So to promote kendo, it's a completely different thing than trying to promote kendo, for example, in Croatia or some other country that doesn't have this sort of 
uh, cultural background. Uh, and uh, so if you want to do some sort of uh, demonstration or you want to track people, it, it becomes it becomes a bit of a pain in the sense that there's it's no point in just showing, okay, he's doing whatever, Uchikomigeko, and they're doing it, and, and then you say, this, 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 that. You need to provide context. You need to provide the whole, a whole sort of narrative backbone to it. Otherwise, it's just a couple of guys screaming at each other and hitting each other with sticks. Right. So how how do you explain that? I mean, uh, not many people know what kendo is in, in Croatia, as you as you mentioned. Uh, there's yeah. no there's not that cultural understanding or background um, of of I imagine a, a lot of Japanese culture is is just mm. completely outside. You know, they've never encountered really any, any of it. So how do you tell that narrative story? Or provide that, that context. You usually provide some sort of context. Uh, if you're doing like a straight on uh, demonstration and you want just like in the public square, or whatever, whatever the public context might be, you just try to give like a brief intro and then, you know, explain what they're doing, why are they doing it. And, you know, the, the hard part obviously becomes, you know, how do you explain, how do you explain Ki? And it's like, why are you screaming? And, and if you go deeper into it, like, uh, oh, kick and tie, you know, it's like, <laughs> it doesn't, just doesn't resonate, uh, like, in, in, uh, in, with somebody who is not familiar with the context. So it, it's a bit, bit, bit problematic. Much easier if you, if you do it through some sort of, uh, like, a university level or a context, like a lecture type of thing, where you can give a little bit of his, historical background, obviously, where you, you uh, do a lot of referencing to popular culture. And then you know, uh, little cogs are starting to sort of you know, <laughs> come together and move move along, and then people start following, and then people start uh, they become more engaged. Let's say with the whole process. So, but it's always it's, it's always the storyline. I mean, it, it, the premise to uh, the premise of promoting kendo is all you you need to give them a story. Uh, because it, it's not Japan. It's not like showing up and okay, you have I don't know, dojo and you and you know it because it's part of your culture. You need to sell the culture first in order for them to get an experience, you know, the next level. In this case, kendo. That's very that's very that's very interesting. Yeah. Um. So speaking of um, you know, teaching university, I understand uh, you're, you're you're currently working on a uh, a Japanese creation. Uh, university link between uh, Zadar and, and Kansai University. Yeah, yeah actually, it's already it's been established for a few years by now. Uh, we this is a, a, a sort of a, um, one of those weird, pro, weird projects that I usually find myself in, in the sense that, he, and usually these weird projects, when related to Kendall, they start over a couple of years. Uh, and uh, we had Alex in two, I don't remember the year, but it's like three years ago by now, maybe four. He, four, uh, he came to Zadar. I invited him to sort of come to Zadar, give us a lecture on Kendo and, and sort of coordinate this seminar. We have this, let's say, a yearly Gashku, Yadera Gashku uh, each year. I, I do uh, want to talk about that. That's something. Yeah, yeah, yeah but it's, 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 it's related. Yeah, it's all related. And it says that he, he showed up here. And we had a couple of beers and was like, okay, maybe we should do this or that. And I and, and started thinking about it. So a few months passed and uh, I sent him an email and I was like, okay, can you find me a person? Or he was, I think at the time he is or he was in charge of international relationship. Uh, or no, he was, he was, or he was part of the office. I'm not sure now. And uh, I told him, let's try to find a, a way of connecting the two universities. Right. Usually, university have these sort of, sort of agreements, but usually they're done within Europe or you know this is sort of a bit closer to home. And we started digging around, uh, and he told me, "Okay, we need to do this, this, and that." And I started working on the paperwork, and then I knocked uh, at the offices, started you know going around the offices here in, in Zadar. And at first, the reaction reaction was like, "What Japan? Why? <laughs> what? What is this what? random university in? Yeah, yeah in what do you mean? Right? <laughs> like, uh... <laughs> but but I have to say, uh, uh, my university they were extremely receptive uh, uh, regarding that because I, I, once again, you have to tell them the story uh, or you have to contextualize it and, and, and explain what are the benefits. And what I tried to do, um, I'm just cutting the, 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 all of the, the, the backstory a little bit short, but it's just a lot of paperwork and a lot of contracts uh, yeah, and describing and, and telling them how great we are. 
the idea was that we could use Kendall as some sort of a cultural bridge through which, uh, but and usually we, when we talk about Kendall, we talk about cultural bridges and connecting this and connecting that, but usually this connection occurs. Yeah, that's, that's our, our, our motto is crossing swords and borders, right? Exactly, it's, it's a, exactly. But usually the, the thing about that is that the people that are uh, crossing that bridge are usually closely connected to Kendall or Yaido or you know, some really martial arts, right? So the, from my perspective was, okay, we get to do Kendo and we're gonna find, and we actually did find a way to have some sort of sub, a subtext to the, to the, to the um, uh, memorandum understanding as it's called, uh, where you get to do Kendo or you get to do this and that. But uh, besides that, you, we are building through Kendo uh, a possibility for people uh, from both universities, both Kansai and, and Zadar, to experience Japanese or Croatian culture in the sense that they, we have exchange students coming over the, and they don't have any connection to Kendo at all, right? So on one hand, if you're interested in Kendo, you can do that. And this is only one aspect or one, one dimension of the whole project. But then on the other hand, you have a whole bunch of other people who don't have anything to do with martial arts in general. They just want to experience studying abroad. So that, that was the premise. And uh, we started building on that and it, it was, really really successful so far once again we have a, a bit of a problem uh, right now uh, due to the situation but at the time uh, like as of well let's say a year ago before everything started sort of falling apart we had about five six i think students from kansai coming uh, from kansai coming to zadar and it's completely paid by the university because they want to support, you know, this exchange program and stuff like that. So it, it is a very, very positive, uh, ex it was a very, and it is a very positive experience. And then you have this sort of subtext to it. You add the subtext to it, and which is Kendo, which allows me, Alex, and you know, some other people to enjoy the benefits of this type of international, uh, international, international relationship. Right. It's really an, an eye-opening experience, right? Uh, going from from either country to to the other and seeing the, the 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 different way. I remember actually one of one of the people who actually has done some uh, I don't want to say modeling, but uh, has helped with some of the videos. Uh, Kawakami uh, mm -hmm. Koji San right? was 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 one of the early participants, and uh, mm -hmm. his his experience there seems to have been quite quite positive. And that, that that's the first part of the story. Actually, that's the the, the first. Tier. Uh, the second one was the establishing the introduction of a Kendo uh, course, right? Now the Kendo course, and when I mean Kendo course, when I say Kendo course, I don't mean like a, like a training session. You do just training, and that's about it. But actually, what we try to do, or actually what I try to do, is to introduce a proper uh, course which combines practice, combines Keiko, with some sort of actual academic studying of Kendo. Right, like a theoretical study of kendo in the sense, well, and since it, it is and open to all students, either uh, either uh, exchange students or, or or students from Zadar, and premised on obviously I use and I abuse uh, Alex's texts <laughs> to do that, but we have a syllabus, proper syllabus, explaining a little bit of history, a little bit of historical background, tradition, reiho, and all of that. So students who join this course, who participate in the course, they get a chance to uh, do Kendo, obviously, on a basic level, like a 6Q, 5Q uh, type, of, uh, type of level. But they get a little bit of history, they get a little bit of tradition, they get a little bit of uh, Budo history, you know. And so it, it's kind of, and there's also an interesting experiment. Obviously, the interesting part was uh, how to explain everything to my university in a sense okay I, I i teach american popular culture and american horror horror genre you know and then i show up and uh, and it's like yeah well, it's teach a little Kindle. bit out of out of just your, a little uh, bit yeah specialty right uh. <laughs> there, there were some eyebrows being, being raised at the time uh but we managed to sort of pull it through and uh once again it was a great success we had up to, I think, one year, one semester, we had almost 30 students coming up, you know, uh, wanting to try it. We didn't have enough shinai you know, to, to, to pass around. So it's, it's, really, it's really interesting. It's, it's, it's like an interesting mixture of, of a little bit of everything. Yeah? And the final product, in my opinion, or from my experience, is, it, it, it's very, very, very positive. 
and also it works as a great, it has a lot of uh, marketing potential, let's say for the university in the sense that as far as I know, there are no similar courses being offered at university level uh, in Europe. There, there is Chem. university levels, you know, like, uh, like a sports section or whatever they do, but I'm not sure um, if there is anything similar to what we are trying to do here. Yeah, well, certainly. I think uh, there's, there's, yeah, there, there, there's not much uh, academic on uh, on Canada people. A lot, most of it is is oral transmission, right? Yeah, from from sensei to, to student, and and things get sometimes a little bit garbled and uh, always not sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> it's the lost in translation, lost in translation. <laughs> yeah. And and there's so much of, of kendo history as well that uh, even even long term Japanese practitioners of kendo mm -hmm. don't know. I mean, I'm not. I'm just like a, like a parrot. I'm just repeating uh, words uh, defined and said and written by by Alex. Obviously, it, I'm not in any way, shape, or forms form uh, attempting to do much anything to to sort of produce any of my uh, reproduce any of the lore that I experienced because there's no point to it, and there's no need for it with, since he's being hyper productive in the last couple of years uh, or decades. Uh, but just the fact that you get all this knowledge and the ability to work with it and uh, sort of uh, present it to a larger audience, an audience which is not necessarily exposed to this type of culture or this type of narratives, uh, it, it's an interesting experience for me. And I think it's an interesting experience for them. And, and, you, and you get this, let's be, uh, but be banal and say you know you get this marketing for kendo marketing you know done in I think in in, in the right way. Now it's not just you know sweat, pain, tears, and the occasional beer, but actually there's a little bit of story, there's a little bit of history, there's a little bit of you know this attractive aspect of the whole thing. Also silly, you know, you know many silly stories. <laughs> those those that's the only thing maybe that I can that I can uh, tell my students. You know, from my personal experience, <laughs> the silly, <laughs> the, the behind the curtain stories. There right? are, there are, there are quite a few of those. Yeah, yeah. Do 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 many of these students, or do any of these students stick around and, and join the yeah, club or, or participate in, in kendo after the class? They do or after uh, the course. Uh, not not as many as I would like, obviously. But yeah, but there's always one or two. They're kind of you know, oh, can I try? Can I see you know, how it goes? Can I give it a shot? Uh, some of them stick, some of them don't. It, it, it depends. I think they once they they get uh, uh, beyond, they pass beyond the the, the 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 initial you know exoticism of the whole thing, and you get to do like just walking for a couple of months or so, uh, or God forbid, suburbs. You know, it, it it wears off a little bit, and then you have oh well, I can make it on Monday, you know, <laughs> and stuff like that. Yeah, but well, especially so university kids, right? There's 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 so much else going on, right? It's, there's it's, always something else going on, <laughs> but it's okay. I mean, as long as we are now at the, at a point where people uh, are familiar, let's say, uh, uh, with kendo uh, within the university context, students recognize it as as, as, a, as a part of the program offered offered by the university. Um, this program has been sort of disseminated a little bit or copied a little bit uh, throughout uh, Croatia as well. So people, so other dojos are trying to do the same thing, and which is and and some some of them had some uh, good feedback, good response to these programs. Uh, once again, we got we are limited at the, at the moment with, with a whole bunch of things. If it's not an earthquake, if it's been the pandemic, and you know it's it's a bit of a chaotic situation at the moment. But uh, I think when things calm down a little bit, uh, these programs will continue and definitely be, uh, have a sort of positive, positive uh, consequences to the whole program. That should be very, very interesting. Um, so, you know, we, we've also been thinking about uh, how we can promote the, 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 the teaching of Kendo, not just in... in um, uh, not just in the dojo, but uh, but in an mm -hmm. academic context, right? I think it's it's really useful for everyone to to know the history and, as you say, the cultural context uh, from from which it comes. 
That's, uh, no, we tend to we tend to be this sort of sect like uh, you know <laughs> approach to, to 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 life in relation to Canada. You know, it's our little community. We like to keep it as, as such, but it we part of the soul of Canada. I think in, eventually will have to be solved in order to in order to for it if we want to if we decide as a community to to expand to judo level jiu jitsu levels uh, karate levels you know some of it something something has to pay in order for us to reach those levels uh, i i think it's kind of unavoidable hopefully it's not going we're not going to go into the olympics direction uh, i wouldn't like that uh, but that's just my personal opinion uh, obviously there are many many thoughts and <laughs> and arguments being made uh, uh, relating to that topic, but we'll see. Something something will be lost in the process. I think something got lost in, in the past 10 years as well. There's more emphasis being placed on the sports aspect, uh, which it's fine. I mean, I'm not saying that. Not, it, I don't have anything against that, but um, it, it, it changes. I think the whole thing uh, changes the, the whole uh, martial art in itself. Uh, into something else, morse it into something else. And so we'll see, I guess. So in terms of Kendo Train, right, the, aside from the university, of course, you guys uh, every year also have a very big uh, gashku at uh, yeah. Yadera. Um, can you tell me a little bit about that? A crazy project, once again, <laughs> the, the process, the, the, the thought process. Same. How do you how do you put together something like that? I mean, it would it's been. It's... Uh, I, I was inspired many years ago when we started doing uh, when I started doing kendo. Uh, there was this uh, a similar gashku uh, in uh, Trieste, uh, the Italian town close to our border, and I got in, uh, and, and we started sort of uh, getting our kendo info and advice and, and stuff like that from a local teacher there many years ago. And um, they organized this big seminar during the, the summer. It was like a summer thing uh, where they would gather around 100, 150 people. There was five, six, seven Japanese senseis. And it was like a, like, it was like a meeting point for a large pa- part of Europe at the time, right? And you would go there and I, I attended twice, I think. If I remember correctly, I was there twice. Uh, and, and just you, you go there and everybody's so relaxed, everybody's so kind, everybody was really like in the summertime, you would go for, you had like cake in the morning, cake in the, cake in the afternoon, in, the meet, in between you would go for a swim and you know, stuff like that. So, very relaxed atmosphere, very relaxed uh, experience, I would say. And um, and that stopped for many reasons. Uh, the teacher, the local teacher, he passed away a couple of years ago. So, so, so the whole project got, I think it was relocated to, to a city in Northern Italy. And it's going on even today, but slightly different what's going on even today. Uh, but it got me thinking, right? Uh, it got me thinking and, uh, and Zadar being a tourist city and being well connected to the rest of Europe, uh, it was sort of a logical step forward, I would say. You know, uh, we did so much traveling over the years and decades that, you know, we had the discussions like, okay, we travel like nine months out of the year all around you know, the world. Maybe we should try to organize something where we can keep, kick back, have a beer and just go for Keiko, you know? <laughs> get out of the apartment, go for Keiko and come back home just to see uh, what it feels like. Uh, and, and that's how the project started. You know, I, since we all know each other as a network, you know, one way or the other, I started calling people, inviting people, asking for advice, asking how this could be done. And, and we set up the first, we set up the first Gash Club. Uh, it was a rather, sm- well, rather, it was a smaller event, about 60 people or so joined. Uh, I think at the first Gash Club, we had a master from Korea. Uh, Korean sensei, uh, who came to Zadar through Livio Lancini, Lancini sensei, who helped us out with that. And then the second year, it got a bit bigger. The year after that, it got a little, even, bit, even bigger. And then Alex joined us and, and it became something completely different because once again, I'm, I used and abused Alex to, to sort of give us lectures on Kendo at the university, right? And then the whole university to university's connection got developed. Uh, that was a huge kashku as well, right? That was how many people? Uh, I think the last one, the last one was about 150 or so. 
And I think we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna stop with 150. We're gonna block the number of participants because it, we you started using like two sports halls next to each other, <laughs> which is fine. But you know, I like having lots of people. But then you have to coordinate everything, and, uh, and it's one of those things you start like. And, and it, then we had like a like a. Um, if the Gashko starts on Friday and ends on Sunday, right? Because you had all of these teachers, you usually have all of these teachers flying in on Monday or or Sunday or the week prior to that. So we practically start with Gashko like a week ahead of the original one. So by the end of the whole thing, I usually pass out. It's like, you know, just <laughs> usually Alex is the last person to leave. And I just send him off, grab a sandwich and just uh, pick a blanket and just I'm, I'm gone for a week. Right. Uh, but yeah, about 150 people and it, it gets a little bit hard to coordinate everything and everybody after uh, after 150. So I think we're going to stick that once we come back, if we come back. You know? hopefully, hopefully we will. Uh, yeah, hopefully we will. But it's it's an interesting, uh, it's, it, 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 I think it's an interesting experience. It's an interesting gashku in the sense that we do a little bit of Okay, we do a little bit of beers, but we do a little bit of, uh, there's a shimpan session for shimpan training, uh, which we introduced a couple of years ago. Uh, there's Alex's lecture uh, on some aspects of Kendo or Buddha related um, uh, things. There is, um, there's Keiko in itself, right? Lots of, you get to meet usually uh, that was one of the points why I wanted to organize something like that because usually if, if usually we travel travel for tournaments and you meet a whole bunch of interesting people and you, you know, have fun with them and all that but there is very little possibility for all of us to meet in the same place to have a GGA core to just to relax you know or whatever it's usually very schedule oriented you do this you do that you finish the tournament and you go back home uh, here you get a chance to get once again all of those national team members, uh, senseis, uh, and all of that in a much more relaxed context, right? Uh, for example, and so it's not only and and this works on different levels. Like on one level, you get to practice or train with like the top tier of national teams in, in Europe, right? which is a big deal for a lot of people, especially for young people who want to sort of prove themselves or want to try out certain things, you know, it's, 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 it's important. Then on, 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 a, on, on a different level, you have all of these senses and we had the privilege and, and really the, the, your sheer luck to have a whole bunch of senses uh, uh, over the years uh, here. And you, once again, you uh, provide the context and the possibility for younger Kenshi to actually uh, connect, to interact with all of these senses in a more relaxed manner that we usually do, you know, when you find yourself on the other side of their shinais. So you get to talk to them, you get to laugh with them, you get to have a beer with them, you get to ask them the, you know, the silly questions which you usually wouldn't ask. Uh, and I think it works, it works very well um, in this process of expanding one's kendo. Uh, in allowing them to see that there is one, for starters, a human being on the other side of the Shinai, which you know sometimes you can you, you can see the human being. Sometimes you can just <laughs> you get punished for it, uh, but that, that's one thing. Uh, and I think people tend to uh, fall in love with Kendo within such context in a completely different way. People tend to to to, to learn things about themselves and about this sort of uh, kind of community which are usually uh, reserved, I would say, for either national team members or people who tend to uh, interact with these senses or this sort of you know, closer, even closer circuit, circuit of, of people uh, within uh, within the kind of community. So it allows everybody to experience you know different different things, new things. I think that they usually don't get a chance to uh, within some within some other context. Well, I think some of the some of the best learning I've ever had has has always been uh, in the in the space at seminars outside of out, yeah. outside of the dojo the, uh, exactly. the, the 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 drinking afterwards or the dinner mm -hmm. or or even just even banal uh, banal things like you're walking the sensei back to the hotel and you know they 
just drop these these nuggets <laughs> on yeah, you. Yeah, but, but just these simple things, like I don't know, having a, a beer, like you said, or having a, I don't know, just a random chat, like for example, a, a whole bunch of things which uh, I learned, like in Kitamoto. You know, you, you do the seminar, but then after it's not that kind of a pressured type of uh, event. You, you can, you know, just talk with somebody. You can have fun. Uh, you can you can uh, really learn from you know from a random situation, a lot of things. So I had this is what we had in mind when we started organizing that, and it turned out to be this sort of. A, meeting point once again for for a lot of people from not not exclusively even from europe you know there's a whole bunch of people coming from all around the place we had uh, i think all around the world, all around from russia from japan from you know israel a whole bunch of people visiting us visiting us every year so i'm kind of i'm really really glad and happy with the whole thing turned out you know so 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 nicely any advice you have for people uh, who are maybe in other parts of the world who want to put together uh, a, a seminar of their own? I mean, what were some of the big mistakes or big learnings that, that you had when when putting together uh, Yedera? Well, you, yeah, one, one thing, maybe not not to follow any rules, <laughs> in the sense that we are all accustomed to sort of follow certain patterns and uh, people say, you know, oh, it's, this is impossible, that is impossible. And because if you follow rules, I mean, you, you can organize something, but if you want to make it special and, and make it meaningful, I think you have to go a little bit outside. You have to think outside the box. That That's for sure. Because if it wasn't for that, we would definitely not have this connection with Alex over the years. Um, I think he he redefined uh, the Gashko here over the years. Uh, in, in in a matter that usually i mean you don't get that i mean he is a very he is a very interesting let's call him an entity he would like that uh he's a very interesting <laughs> entity within this uh, uh within the contemporary budo scene and, and kendo scene uh, so he gives this and and he provided the um, how should i put it he provided uh, a direct, or he, he managed to be this direct connection between Japan and 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 the rest of the world, uh, in this case Croatia or Argashku, uh, without the translator in between. And this this translating process, it's it, it's a very interesting one. Uh, I think it's a very relevant uh, one. You know how somebody explains what, what we mentioned before. Somebody goes and explains you know how to do a man, and and then you're gonna you know, I personally I think I heard like maybe 50 versions of how to do proper men. Yeah, no, just put your hand like this. No, you have it, it's too tight. It's it's like year after year, right? And usually lots of these mistakes and it's are, are, are caused because of this translating process that goes on. To give you an example, the first year we had, like we, we had a uh, the, the, the Korean master as, 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 as a coordinator and sensei uh, Digashku. So we had, uh, we had uh, the, the the sensei speaking in Korean, right? The Korean was translated into Italian. The Italian then I translated Italian to English, and then you always ha- you always have a couple of person you know, persons behind me who don't speak English, so I have to translate once again into Croatian. So uh, you can imagine like a, uh, what kind of game of telephone there. It, it gets lost. It gets lost. And Alex, uh, you know, but, uh, because he's there, and then at the same time he speaks English. He, I think he, uh, he worked as a, as, a, as a catalyst, as something that really can bring the group together. And and it's like, oh yeah, you meant that precisely that. Okay, let's do it that way, right? It brings a different kind of energy to the whole thing. And it's it's. I, I think people sometimes underestimate just how difficult it is to translate also on the fly. Mm-hmm. Um, I know certainly from you know I, I speak Japanese, and, and there have certainly been times in the audience where I'm going uh, at, at these kind of seminars. I'm going, I don't really think that's what that person, what that sensei actually said. But you know, when you're when you're up there in the hot seat, it's 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 quite yeah, different, yeah. <laughs> and you're panicking, and you're going, well, wait, what was the first part of that thing that they said? Did I, you just, did I talk I mean, about that? You find the solution in the middle. <laughs> the, easier, the easiest one. Honestly, yeah, of, all the, of all the things I've seen Alex do, the interpreting these uh, these 
uh, live, I think is, is, is one of the most impressive, you know, every year at the, uh, there's, or the, uh, it's the, the format's changed now, but every year they had, um, a big seminar, uh, in Japan. Um, like the, I think if I forgot the official names, like the Budo culture seminar or something like that. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, it's to go up and interpret a bunch of things back and forth between, between, between English and Japanese and Japanese and English and just does it flawlessly. It's, it's, yeah. it's quite amazing. Yeah, but th- that's the uniqueness of all of them, you know, that he 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 as an entity <laughs> and it's to, to project. Yeah, that, that's. Well, I had a lot of fun uh, at at Yadero. Yeah, I think uh, it's, it's it's certainly one of um, one of the more positive one of the more positive seminar experiences that that he's had for sure. Well, I'm hoping to to continue that that, that practice. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> I don't know. I can't wait to get back out there. Mm. What's the situation over there? Are you guys practicing or everything locked? Uh, well, Japan has gone back into uh, a bit of a lockdown, although it's not nearly as as strict as the first one. But, you know, the, the, the issue here is the, the government doesn't have the legal power to compel mm-hmm. anything. Um, and so it's, it's strictly sort of volunteer, volunteer only. Um, but uh, yeah, there, there, there's been all sorts of restrictions. I was at the dojo today, but... Um, the I guess I guess it's an order for the venues, right? The the, the athletic centers that you're mm-hmm. only allowed to be there for an hour. Mm-hmm. So we had to so we had to shorten uh, shorten practice, that kind of thing. And it's it's impacted other things too. Um, uh, as as you may be aware, they they are holding the All Japan's or they're planning to, but um, the police were not allowed to participate. This year, okay. so how is that going to work? <laughs> well, it's meant that uh, the 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 field is of, of of people who qualified is is very different than than normal, right? No, I remember. Uh, I think it's usually like out of the sixty four people, you have like fifty eight policemen, and then like like the remaining are like prison uh, mm-hmm. prison guards, right, or, or some right. It's 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 very skewed, but uh, I uh, but you know, they haven't announced officially why, but, but my suspicion is, and this is just my, my, my own wild theory. I have no, I don't have to back it up, but it's uh, my, my guess would be it's because the police were involved in some pretty high profile clusters early on. <laughs> Everybody's sick. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there are cases where, uh, where, you know, like, uh, like 40 people or something, they, 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 they held practice even though they weren't supposed to be, mm-hmm. uh, and, uh, and, and became a cluster and, um, yeah, that was that was very, <laughs> very so, negative. Some more interesting times ahead of us, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, then um, I think we're just about out of time. So I'd like to wrap up by just thanking you again for for taking the time out of out of your schedule to come and talk to us about uh, about these things. We, we we really enjoy hearing from from you and and your points of view. Um, I'd also like to thank uh, our patrons uh, on Patreon who are also. A part of what makes it possible for us to for us to keep doing uh, and publishing these these videos. Um, so, thank you and uh, thanks to thanks to all our viewers. <laughs>